Abu Qudama is a man who gave his life for the sake of Allah. Abu Qudama is a man who said, my life belongs to Allah. And a young man, he asked him a question. Tell us the most amazing thing that you ever witnessed in your life. He said, I'll tell you that. Ya Ammi Abu Qudama, wait for me, my uncle. And he found a fierce warrior on his horse galloping fiercely towards him. He said, you don't understand. I made a dua all my life to have this opportunity. And I thought that you were going to beat me. Allah decreed that I was going to unite with you. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. He said, ask me, what do you want? He said, I want to fight with you. And I said to him, Ma anta illa ghulam. You're just a boy. Go back to your mother. Go back to your parents. And the young boy, he was shocked, taken back. Wallahi, my father died for the same cause that you're dying for. Ya Aba Qudama, don't turn me back. My mother has sent me. And he said, I had no choice. So I said to him, stay close to me. And your work is to prepare food for the soldiers. He said, fair enough. I'll do that. And so the time of lunch came and the soldiers wanted to eat. And he sent out this young man, his name was Muhammad, to go out and prepare the meal. And then when about one or two hours passed, no food had arrived. Abu Qudama said, so I went searching for him and thought what had kept him so long. And when I arrived, I found the pot was boiling in front of him and he was asleep beside it. I said, Subhanallah. And then the young boy, in his sleeve, he smiled. And then he smiled bigger. And then I said, I'm not going to disturb him. And he started moving things and he woke up. I'm sorry, I, I forgot. The, I'm going to finish it. No, you're not going to finish the food. Just relax. He said, no, I want to finish. He said, no, if you want to cook, tell me about what you saw. He said, it's between me and my Allah, my Lord. However, I'll tell you. This is a story which shocked me, Wallahi al-Azim. And it is a story that existed in about the 10th century in the Islamic era. Enemies of Islam who were ruthless were attacking the Muslims in a place called Ar-Raqqa in Iraq. And they had invaded the homes and raped the women and stole their children and killed the old men. This is in history because they said our Lord is Allah. After doing so, there was a man at that time who existed. He was a great scholar and a great leader in battles. His only cause and motive was to defend the Muslims wherever they may be, wherever they were killed or oppressed. His name was Abu Qudama. He was once sitting in the masjid when a group of people came up to him and they said to him, Ya Abu Qudama, can you tell us of an amazing story that happened during your time? We want to hear the most unusual and surprising story ever to be heard. Can you entertain us, Ya Abu Qudama, and make us come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And then Abu Qudama sat for a while and gathered them. When everyone was silent, he said to them, I recall one of the most shocking stories that ever happened. Until today, I don't know how to explain it. He said, I went in a small village. And in the city, there was a masjid, a small masjid. And he said, we were going to a place called Tarsus. And this was the boring city between the Muslims and the enemy of Islam at that time. And there was war taking between these two countries. And he said, we were going there because we were soldiers. He said, I stopped by that city. And in the masjid, after Salat al-Isha, I stood up and I said to the people, Ya ayyuhan nas, O people, fear Allah. And be part of this. And join us to, and help al-Islam. 
He said, not too many people responded. And I went and I rent a room for the night. And he said, subhanallah, in the middle of the night, someone is knocking on the door. And I said to myself, who could that be? I'm a stranger in the city, nobody knows me. He said, I get a little bit concerned, so I opened the door. And what did he see? A lady in the middle of the night, a woman came to my door, wearing hijab from head to toe, wearing niqab. And when I opened the door, I was shocked. And I said to her, Ya Amatullah, what are you doing? Faqalat, are you Aba Qudama? Are you the man who was calling out for recruitment today? Were you the man who was gathering wealth in order to go and guard our borders and protect us? He said, yes. So she said, please open your hand. And he opened his hand and she dropped a piece of cloth which was wrapped up into his hand. Take this. It is an amana. It is a trust. And she ran off. I wanted to ask her many other questions, but she had no reply. So I went inside and I opened that cloth and I found a piece of paper with something written on it and a thick lock of hair. I read the paper and the paper said, Today you were calling out for recruitment to fight with you and protect the weak people. I am a woman and unable to fight. And I don't have enough wealth to give you. So my heart was struck with shock and sorrow when I did not find anything to give you. So I went home and cut a lock of my hair. And that is the one you see in this cloth. The only thing which I can give to the cause of this is my lock of hair. I ask you to please use it as your rein, the rope that would steer the horse. So that maybe Allah will recognize this and know that I was fighting with you in that jihad. He said, Subhanallah, what kind of a woman is this? He said, so I took the lock of hair and I did put it onto my reins. The next morning I gathered the troops and we went out in the into the battlefield. When we reached the battlefield, we noticed that a group of army after a day began to make their way towards us. And so I got the army ready and I told them to stand guard. As we were about to move forward, I heard a voice from a far distance calling out, Ya Aba Qudama, Ya Aba Qudama. And he's riding his horse and he's coming so fast. And he said, Ya Aba Qudama, I ask you by Allah, wait for me, wait for me. Say to the people who are with me, proceed, continue, I'll deal with this man. And the man jumped out of his horse and he's, you know, panting and he's breathing hard. And he said, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, that I was able to catch up with you. Ya Aba Qudama, ah, let me come with you, let me go with you. And he said, this man is covering his face. And I realized that voice is a voice of a young man. And I said to him, we remove the, the veil out of your face. If you're a man, we will take you with us. But if you're a kid, we will send you back to your parents. And he removed, he says, Subhanallah. The only thing that I can compare the face of this young man is the moon, light, radiance coming, shining out of his face. And I said to him, you're just a boy. Go back to your mother. Go back to your parents. And the young boy, he was shocked, taken back. Wallahi, my father died for the same cause that you're dying for. Ya Aba Qudama, don't turn me back. And he said, Ya Aba Qudama, Wallahi, I am a man. Yeah, and he look up this, the mentality of that young man. He said, Wallahi, I'm a man. I memorized the book of Allah. The way they think was completely different. It's the principle. Standards. How can you come and fight with us? No, you are not allowed to come and fight with us. You are too young. Return back. And he said, but my mother came to you last night. He said, your mother? He said, yes, my mother. He said, who is your mother? 
And he said, she's the one that gave you a lock of her hair. And she told you to look after me. He said, is that your mother? He said, naam. He said, you should go back and look after her son. Don't come here and fight. And he started to hold on to him. And he said to him, no, Abu Qudama, no, no. My father fought in jihad and I want to fight too. I want to defend. Please accept me. I have great experience. I have fought many battles. And I'm an experienced horse rider. Wallahi, you will find me that I'm able to help you a lot. When he insisted on him and he insisted on him, Abu Qudama literally said to him, okay, if you are insisting on traveling along with us, then you have to stand in the last line. And your work is to prepare food for the soldiers. He said, fair enough. I'll do that. And he said, I had no choice. So I said to him, stay close to me. He said, when we ride on our horses, he's riding, but he's reading Quran. When we walk, he's remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, at the end of the day, the people said, we are fasting and we need to make full iftar. And the young boy said, I'm not fasting. I'll serve you. You guys rest. So we said, no, no, no. You're also tired. You know, you're not experienced. He said, no, no, no. I want to make the food for you. So he, so we said to him, well, go away then and keep the smell of the food away from us. The time of Salat al-Maghrib was getting closer and closer and closer. And then the people said to me, he said, Abba Qudama. Ya Abba Qudama, go see this young boy that you sent for food. So he said, I followed the print of the young man and I realized this young man, he started cooking. And while he was waiting for the food, he got tired and he just slept right next to the food. He said, I felt sorry for him. And I said to myself, you know, I'll finish the food. And I'm looking at him. And then the young boy, in his sleeve, he smiled. And then he smiled bigger. And then I said, I'm not going to disturb him. And he started moving things. And he woke up. I'm sorry. I, I forgot. The, I'm going to finish it. No, you're not going to finish the food. Just relax. He said, no, I want to finish. He said, I will let you finish the food under one condition. What is it? You tell me. Why were you smiling in your dream? And that young boy, all of a sudden, his face just dropped. And he looked away and he said, Ya Abba Qudama, leave it alone. I said, no, Wallah, I'm not going to leave it alone and I'm not going to let you cook. That's it. He said, Ya Abba Qudama, don't deprive me from the ajr of cooking for the Sahibin. He said, no, if you want to cook, tell me about what you saw. He said, it's between me and my Allah, my Lord. However, I'll tell you. And then the young boy said, I slept and then I noticed as if the last hour had come. The world ended. And then all of a sudden, I hear a voice calling out, Grab Muhammad and take him to paradise. Amongst everyone, a light came to me. And then there was a man next to me, a very handsome man. His light emanated from his face till it reached the far corners of what I could see. And he took me into Jannah. And I asked him, who are you? And he said, I am one of your servants, which Allah has made for you in Jannah, in your palace. And he said, where are you taking me? This is when he began to smile. He said, I am taking you to your wealth and to your family and to your belongings and possessions in your palace in Jannah. And so his smile grew more. And then when he reached the great gates and the great doors, he said, I cannot enter here. For you have women inside and I am not allowed to set eyes upon them. His smile grew more. And so he entered. And then I found many beautiful women. And they grabbed my, my arm and took me away. And I thought, are you my wives? And they said, no, no, no. We are just your servants. But you have your princess waiting inside Al Khidr. Inside the tent, reclining on her silk sheets, waiting for you. And so I entered. And all of a sudden I see a woman which almost made my soul escape from my body. And I said to her, who are you? And a smile grew when his teeth began to show. And she said, I am the one whom Allah promised you. I am your wife in Jannah. And then he said, he came to 
extend his arm and touch her. And then she grabbed his arm and returned it back gently. And she said to him, No, Ya Muhammad, not now. I ask Allah to save you from any bad acts. I am not yours yet. And it is because you have saved yourself from haram acts with other women, Allah gave me to you. So keep yourself pure, Ya Muhammad. Our meeting is tomorrow and we shall break our fast together because Muhammad used to fast one day on and one day off. And then he said, when she was speaking to me, I began to laugh and I really wanted to approach her and she would say, no, ya Muhammad, not now. No, ya Muhammad, not now. And I began to laugh and laugh until I woke up. That is my story, ya Ammi Abu Qudam. Please keep it a secret between you and me. Otherwise, my rewards will be gone said, it's my secret. He said, Abu Qudama, I kept my eyes watching this young boy. The next day, the enemy arrived. It was fierce. And we attacked and charged. I looked behind me where Muhammad was supposed to be standing. And all of a sudden, he was right in the front. And he did not have any experience in fighting because he could not hold his sword. Muhammad had deceived Abu Qudam. He said, I could not reach him anymore. But he was right in the front line. And he would call out the message of his mother. If you meet them, then do not run away and show them your back. He would call out like that. Allahu Akbar. And he would fight whoever would fight him. He would fight whoever would hold the sword against him. He would protect that person and then that person. Until finally Abu Qudama said, Dust grew so much in my eyes and I lost sight of him. I did not know where he was. Finally, Allah gave us victory because we were fighting for a noble cause. And at the end of the victory, we started looking for our martyrs. And then I just wanted to find Muhammad, the young boy. So I looked and I looked and I looked. And while I'm walking in a pool of blood, people died left and right. And I'm asking, have you seen that young boy? And nobody is willing to identify that young boy. A weak voice came from behind saying, Ya ayyuha nas, O people, please call Abu Qudama for me. O my son, I'm here. And I looked at his body and it's almost cut into pieces. And I start wiping, taking the end of my soul, and I start wiping the blood out of his face, saying, what have you done to yourself? And the young boy, he responded, Ya Abu Qudama, don't use your soul. My soul is already bloody. Use my soul, forget about yours. He said, Wallahi, I cried more. I cried more. He said, my son, I told you that the war is very fierce. Didn't I tell you that the battle is not what you think? And didn't I tell you that you are still young? I told you, my son, and you had to go forward. Why have you done this to yourself? And he looked at him and he said to him, Ammi Abu Qudama, this is what my mother raised me for. My father died for this cause as well. Do you want to deny me? And you of all people, Ya Ammi Abu Qudama, you are telling me to go back when Allah says in the Quran, and what do you fear when fighting in his cause? He said to him, Ya Ammi, this is what I want. Wallahi, I could see my palaces in front of me. If only you could see what I could see, Ya Ammi. And then he said, but I require one thing of you. My mother, when you reach her, she'll be very saddened. And she may not believe you that I have died in the cause of Allah. So I want you to take this piece of my shirt and show it to her so that she can relieve her sadness and know that I am in Jannah and that what she has raised, she will also be in Jannah with me. Let her know that do not be saddened, my mother. I died and you will be with me forever in eternity in Jannah. My mother, I died in the cause of Allah. Now it will be a guarantee that you will be with me and we will be together with my father. He said, because nothing else will calm her heart. He said, Ya Ammi Abu Qudama, I also have a young sister. Her name is Fatima. She's only eight years old. She has grown up with me to love me so much when my father passed away. And I love her extremely. However, my Am, her love I have never seen like that before. She's too attached to me. When you reach her, please try to look after her. Please try to calm her down. Please try to say soothing words to her. For I fear her consequence. She loves me too much. And don't show her, show her my shirt. Abu Qudama promised. And then while he was holding him in his arms, 
young Muhammad began to smile. And his smile grew, and then it grew even more, and then even more until he began to giggle with laughter. And he said, Ya Ammi Abu Qudama, la ilaha illallah, inni la ajidul mardiyata jambi jambi. The woman that he saw in his dreams, her name was Mardiyah. Mardiyah, the pleasing one. He said, Ya Ammi Abu Qudama, look at her, she has just come down from the sky and she is lying beside me holding my hand. She's waiting for me, Ya Am. Allah sadaqani wa'dah. He gave me what he has promised. I am going to Jannah with Mardiyah. She will keep me company, Ya Ammi Abu Qudama. Our secret between you and I. And then he died while he was biting onto his lip and saying to Abu Qudama, Ya Ammi, remember our secret. And he died and went to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then Abu Qudama went back to his land, into, his, into the village in Raqqa. And all the women went out to meet the Mujahideen. And then came the mother of Muhammad, searching for him. And then she came up to Abu Qudama and she said to him, My son, where is my son? And Abu Qudama looked at her and said, He passed away. And he says, He fought in the front line without returning back and he did what you had advised him and what you trained him to do. He said, I do not believe you. I don't believe you. Just as her son said. And then he said, but he told me to give you this shirt. And she looked at his shirt and she looked at it and examined it. And she knew that it was the blood and the stains of her young son Muhammad. And then she cried and put her arms up to Allah. And she said, Alhamdulillah, the one who has saved my son, I will now definitely be guaranteed that I will be reunited with him and my husband. But before that, Abu Qudama saw something. A young girl racing towards every man, fluttering like a butterfly. Touching this man and looking at him. Then touching another man and looking at him. Then turning another man around and examining his face like a young child does. And Abu Qudama knew that this was Fatima looking for her brother. And so I went up to Fatima and I grabbed her and I hugged her and kissed her and I said to her, What are you looking for? And Fatima said, My brother, Muhammad, where's Muhammad? Where's Muhammad? Do you know where Muhammad is? I love him. I want to see him. And he promised me that he will return because Muhammad said to Abu Qudama, he said to him before he died, I promised my sister that I'm going to return. Otherwise she would have never left me. He promised him that he's going to come back. Where is he? Abu Qudama started to cry. Fatima, your brother says Assalamu Alaikum to you. And he says that soon you're going to meet him in Jannah, insha'Allah. She said, Jannah? Did he die? Abu Qudama said, Yes, but he died a noble cause before he could finish this word. Fatima took a very deep breath and she fell unconscious to the ground. He came to pick her up, but the mother raced to her. And she said, Leave her. And she took her daughter away. Abu Qudama knocked and knocked, but it was too late. He heard the mother inside crying and saying, Oh my Lord, my husband died for your cause and he is in Jannah, insha'Allah. My son, I have sacrificed him for you, ya Allah, and I have raised him. Please do not, do not deny me my presence and my unity with him in Jannah. And now my daughter has passed away and followed her brother. Ya Allah, my husband, my son, and my daughter, they are all to you. Inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. To Allah we belong and to him we shall return. O oh Allah, Guarantee me a place in Jannah with them. O oh Allah, unite me with them. And she began to cry until her voice faded away. Abu Qudama kept knocking, but she would not open for him. He said, so I left her and I went away. Until this day, my dear companions, the story has remained unexplainable to me. I do, I do not know what happened after that. And so relate the stories to them so that they may contemplate and think. Not stories that are lies, but stories of true fact that will make you come closer to Allah and into Jannah. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to unite us in Jannah. I thank you for listening, my dear brothers and sisters. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.